Welcome to this quick video walkthrough of NetApp Cloud Volumes for AWS. We're going to walk through creating brand new volumes, changing the size of volumes, mounting volumes in your Linux instances in your AWS compute environment, and moving data from your on-premises environment into the cloud. We already selected a link in your AWS Marketplace, so we're guided directly to NetApp Cloud Central for configuration, which you can also find at cloud.netapp.com. So once we're logging into NetApp Cloud Central, we'll see the Cloud Volumes configuration page. And there's really only this one page that we need to go through to create our first volume. You can see here that two volumes already exist, NetApp Big Data and Machine Learning. And there's this big green button at the top to create a new volume. Let's take a look at the Machine Learning volume. This is only one terabyte in size. Let's say your project is really successful, you need more data. We cannot change this from one terabyte to three terabyte. With one click, and it's done is already increased in size to three terabytes. Next, let's actually create a new volume. So click the green button, create new volume. First, we're going to provide a name for this volume. We're going to call it NetApp Jenkins. We're going to use this volume later for some DevOps integration testing. You can select different regions that are available to you. And then we can select a volume path. Now the volume path, we're actually going to provide you with a number of different choices. You can select that refresh button there on the side if you don't like that particular path that's being automatically created for you. But you can also overwrite those path choices and provide your own path. In this example, we're going to choose NetApp Cloud Volumes. Now this volume could be created from scratch, so it's empty, or it can be created from an existing snapshot. So data that you've already ingested previously in other volumes are now available for you to create as a clone. You can select a service level, and now you can also select the, the size of the volume, in this case, four terabytes. The next step is to configure your export policies. You can limit access to your volume to clients that come from a certain IP address or IP range. You can select between read-only or read-and-write access, and you can choose between NFS v3 and NFS v4. Next, you can also choose your snapshot policy. In this case, we're going to choose a weekly policy. We're going to keep three snapshots. We're going to take those snapshots on a Sunday and a Wednesday at 30 minutes past midnight. Now create this volume, and you can see in just a few seconds, the volume's created and done. The four terabyte volume's created just like that. Now next, I'm going to walk you through how to mount this volume into your existing compute instances. In this case, we're going to mount it into a Linux instance. And if you look at your, your volume description, you see that little question mark on the side. This will provide you with all the necessary mount instructions. You will see how to install an NFS client if it hasn't been installed already, as well as the two commands that you need to properly mount your file system. Now let's switch into the command line once we've copied the uh, make directory command. So we're in the command line now. We're going to SSH into the Linux instance that's running inside AWS. Once you're logged in, we're going to switch to the super user context. And now we're going to insert that make directory command that we just copied from the user interface. So directory has been created. Now we're going to go and copy the, uh, the mount command. We're inserting the mount command here. And the mount is complete. Now we're going to change into the directory, and we're going to create a one gigabyte file. This is a great way to test the functionality, make sure that everything works as expected. It really only takes uh, just a few seconds to create a one gigabyte file, and it's already done. So it was created at about 118 megabytes per second. So now you have a volume created, you have it mounted. We created the file for testing purposes. So next we're going to go into the volume and look at some additional options. So we see the description of the mount target. We can create manual snapshots if we want. That's a great idea to do that before you're making changes to your data in the volume. You can see the export policy, make any changes there. You see your snapshot policy that we discussed previously. But now we also have that tab for sync. Sync is how you get your data from on-premises into your new volume in the cloud. So we're going to create a new relationship here. And this relationship will actually pull data from your on-premises data source the on-premises host that you can find through your VPC connection in AWS. So we're going to identify the host by IP address, and we're using the export here. And as target, we're going to select our volume in the AWS cloud. We're going to create the relationship, and it's done. Now the synchronization is running. 
We can now turn on auto sync, which means that you can keep your data in the cloud and on premises synchronized with each other so that updates will show up on the other side. You can do this with a daily or an hourly schedule. And that's really all there is to it. You see three files have already been processed. Now five files have been processed. So depending on file sizes and the amount of data, that can take a little bit of time. If you don't want to do this, if you don't want to migrate data over the network, if you prefer to ship physical equipment that's similar to AWS Snowball, we can do that as well. Well, that's really all there is to NetApp Cloud Volumes for AWS. It's really simple to set up and configure. Uh, we hope you will enjoy this great new service. Thank you.